what do you see as good leadership? And through your vast experience in the business world, in organizational world, what makes a good leader? The, leader, the leaders in Europe at the institutions, in particular the Commission, have to provide an idea. They have to provide a focus and they have to provide an integrity of the institution that puts Europe before national interests and has a project, a great project for the further, further integration of Europe. It requires many skills. Obviously within the Commission it requires bringing people together in a common purpose. But more particularly it's going to increasingly involve relating with the outside world and not merely the governments but the peoples of different states. And I think President Barroso is aware of this. As a former European Commissioner for Competition, you have played a crucial role in opening up markets across the EU. How do you perceive the economic measures taken by the European Commission and national governments in response to the economic crisis? Well, I, I perceive them as being an understandable reaction to the immediate effects of a serious crisis. But I worry about them. I worry about them because there is a real danger that this will result in protectionism and beggar thy neighbor policies, which we've had before in difficult times. So the Commission has to exert its authority in ensuring that protectionism isn't the result of emergency measures which should be short term and shouldn't have long term structural effects. Where do you see the future of the WTO now? And do you think that global governance is the key to the future? as I've heard some, uh, particularly Socialist International, have been propagating lately. Do you see that as a future? I see, I see the WTO as the great in global institutional change uh, which has taken place since the institutional developments of the late 40s. It was the one great step forward. It was a great step forward simply because it provides a rule-based international trading system. No more and no less than that. If you describe that as part of global governance, yes it is. It's the provision of rules and security, for, particularly for the poor and disadvantaged. The great former imperial powers and the great powers of today have no need, they in many instances believe, of a rule-based system. In fact, they need it too. But certainly the poor and the disadvantaged need it. They need certainty of access to markets, and that's what this is providing. The WTO is a foundation stone of globalization. Ireland, being a former Attorney General, what is your advice for the next referendum? An overwhelming victory, I think, is absolutely <laughs> necessary for the yes side, um, because the last defeat was inexplicable to many outside Ireland. In fact, after it was over, mm. it became apparent that many of the arguments which were advanced and apparently appealed to voters mm. had no substance. Because the Irish basically are pro-European. It's not that they're approaching Europe from a Eurosceptical point of view. Their history and the history of opinion polls has always put us at the highest level of positivism, and it still is. So we should win this, I hope, easily in the end of the day, but it will require effort. Did you ever see it as a failure of Europe to communicate to the Irish people? I did, I did, and we all felt that failure, particularly those of us who are passionate Europeans. We felt that we had failed. Of course, the political system failed because something like 95% of the total electorate, uh, elected body, the parliament, were in favour. And yet it was defeated. So it was a rejection of national government and opposition. It was a, a devastating blow at the time for many of us. Since 2006, your work as a special representative for migration of the UN Secretary General, Kofi Annan, and recently Europe has witnessed a considerable tightening of provisions on outside the EU migration, especially in Italy, for example. Um, how can migration benefit countries' development goals in times of crises? The strains on migration policy are very evident at a time of growing unemployment. It's inevitable that migrants become a focus of negative attention in societies. 
In reality, migra migrants into Europe have provided a great catalyst for growth in much of Europe and undoubtedly in the future will be badly needed for demographic reasons. So the negativism towards migration I would like to see replaced by a greater focus on legal migration. I think it's perfectly legitimate to demand that only those who are legal migrants should be in a particular society. But also a far greater and more constructive engagement with the fact that our societies are all inevitably going to have to have, to an extent, a multicultural identity into the future. So we're going to have to recognize that one element of global interdependence and the knowledge that people have of the way other people live is that people will want to move. And we have to try and find constructive means for dealing with that problem and not simply turn into a protectionist and uh, uh, protected societies. It can't work. It has never worked. And it's not working anywhere that it has tried. Any speculations as to the formulation of the new parliament and the future of Europe from here on in? I have no speculation other than to say that we need in the three key positions, the president of the council, the high representative and the president of the commission, three outstanding individual personalities who put Europe first and are able to communicate with Europeans more generally. We have to raise, in a constructive and positive way, Europe to the top of the agenda because it is the only way to find solutions to our problems.